Hey everyone, welcome to Miniature Painting 101, uh, my new Tuesday video series where I will be covering how to paint a miniature through all the steps of preparation, um, including cleaning the model, removing it from its sprues, uh, possibly pinning, through the entire painting process, um, base coats, layers, shades, uh, color matching, all the way to post painting, such as basing, varnishes, uh, how to protect your miniatures, etc. So welcome to part two of my series, which is dedicated to the paints that we will be using to paint our miniatures. I will be covering the basics of paints. First, a, a very brief difference between acrylic and enamel. Second, the containers of paints, which people have a very strong opinion about, specifically paint pot versus dropper. Third, uh, I will be going over a little bit about each of what I call the Fantastic Four, the biggest four paint companies that people typically use to paint miniatures. And number four, how to properly store your paints to ensure that they last as long as you need them for. So let's begin with the difference between acrylic and enamel based paints. Enamel based paints, for example, uh, the company Testers, are types of paints that when dry produce a very hard glossy finish such as an enamel coat. Uh, these ones require a specific paint remover to clean your brushes, as well as specific paint thinners to dilute the paint when painting your models. This type of paint, though very popular with model cars, model trains, and model planes, does not typically get used for miniatures because of the gloss finish, as well as the difficulty of cleaning your brush. Acrylic paints, on the other hand, have a water-based component to them, and therefore, they are very easily diluted with water and only require water to clean your brush or to clean off the model. Typically, they dry matte, and uh, these paints are typically used for miniatures while not really used for model trains and model planes. That being said, you can use either types of paints for either types of models. However, people just tend to use acrylic paints for when you're painting miniatures. Acrylic paints tend to come in either one of two containers. First of all, paint pots. Second, um, eyedropper styles. While some people like me tend to not have a preference specifically between the two, there are some that swear by the paint pots and there are some that swear by the eyedropper style. So I will cover the pros and cons of each one. I will begin by going over the pros and cons of using dropper style uh, paint containers, such as these Reaper paints. The first important detail when using dropper style paints is that you will require a palette because uh, you need a surface to put the paint on. Second, these eyedroppers can clog, especially the ones from Reaper I find, can clog relatively easily when stored for a prolonged period of time. However, when unclogged with such a device as a safety pin, um, you do get excellent control of the amount of paint you want to put on the palette. Uh, another potential con which some people say is that unfortunately once you put the paint on the palette, it is very difficult to clean up any remainder and put it back in the dropper. Thus, there is potential for waste. But as I said, if you learn, know exactly how much you need, it gives you excellent control of how much paint you want to put on the palette. Second, these types of containers are excellent for mixing because you don't need to put two different brushes in two different pots, put them in the same palette and mix them. You could just quickly uh, squirt two different types of paint in the same palette and mix it with one brush and then use that brush to paint a miniature. The second type of container I will be going over are paint pots, such as these paints produced by Citadel or Games Workshop. When using paint pots, you actually have the option of taking the paint straight from the pot, which I recommend using the lid, um, just using a, taking a little bit of paint from your lid and dabbling it over the, uh, the edge of the pot, because this really does help your brush life. Or you have the option of using a palette, which you just take a little bit more paint than you would, put it in the palette, and it acts in the same way as if you were using a dropper. While pots have potentially the ability to uh, 
to reduce the amount of paint wasted, I recommend making sure that no paint gets in the lid and that it's always sealed very well shut. Now a question that I get a lot is, can I just use dollars or art store paints? Since they're so much cheaper, they would save me a lot of money on my miniatures. And in short, my answer is actually, sure, if you want. However, it does come with a warning. Um, the quality of dollar store paints, or even some of the larger craft store paints, is not necessarily equal to the quality of paints that are specifically designed for miniatures. So I do highly recommend you use the higher quality paints for miniatures and stick to the dollar store paints when painting terrain or bases. However, if you're on a budget, it is ultimately up to you whichever types of paints you want to choose. So with that being said, I would like to cover the pros and cons of each of the major four manufacturers of paints that I typically use or that I know a lot of the better painters use when painting miniatures. So out of the top four companies, you'll notice two of them come in paint pots and two of them come in eyedroppers. First, we have Citadel, produced by Games Workshop for their ranges such as 40K and uh, Fantasy. Second, we have Formula P3, produced by Privateer Press for Warma Hordes. Third, Vallejo, um, an excel another excellent product which comes in eyedroppers, and you'll notice people like Buy Paint and Awesome Paint Job use in their tutorials. And finally, Reaper, uh, which you'll notice I use a little bit of my tutorials, but people such as uh, Mr. Watching Paint Dry or Paul from Mini Wargaming also loves these products in his painting tutorials. So first, I will go over the new Citadel range by Games Workshop. So a little bit about the Citadel pots is that they come in 12 milliliter pots, which is approximately 40% um, of an ounce. They're about $4.50 Canadian, and there's about 145 uh, individual paints in the paint range. Some pros of the new Citadel range is that they divided the types of paints into various steps, which include base coat, layers, and dry brushes, which really assists in the process. Also, they matched up a base color with um, two different layers so that you know which base color should match up with the highlights. Furthermore, since Games Workshop products are the most popular miniature wargaming, any store that sells them also sells these paints, so they tend to be one of the more available uh, brands out there. Some of the potential cons of the Citadel range is first, they actually tend to be the least um, value for your money. Uh, you get the least amount of product for the most money. They tend to actually be the most expensive line of the four, and you get the least. Another problem is that the range does contain many duplicate colors, so the range doesn't actually have 145 different colors, and it can be considered a little bit limited. However, the consistency and coverage of these paints is very nice, as you can see uh, with this quick example of me going over the sheet. Next I will cover Formula P3, the paints produced by Privateer Press for the Warma Hordes range. So Formula P3 comes in 18 milliliter pots which sell for approximately $3.50 Canadian and they come with a very limited range of only about 60 colors. Some of the great qualities of this paint range is that it has amazing consistency and coverage. I really love these paints and they give you great value for money since you actually get a lot more, 50% more per pot for actually a reduction in the price compared to Games Workshop. And they have excellent names for all their paints such as Signar Base and Signar Highlight which easily help you out with the step-by-step -step painting of your miniature. However, one of the big faults of this company is that there are not many colors. As I mentioned, there are just about 60 colors total, including washes and primers. And second of all, they're not very common, especially in Canada. I'm not necessarily reflecting from worldwide. However, these paints are definitely not sold anywhere near as uh, available in stores as the Games Workshop line. 
As you can see, by this quick example, um, the paints here have amazing coverage and consistency and go on much nicer, even much nicer than the new Citadel range. Third, I will cover the Reaper Master range made by Reaper Miniatures. Reaper paints come in 15 milliliter um, eyedroppers, which cost approximately $4 Canadian, and they have a range of about 215 colors. Some pros of Reaper paints is that they are very thin, so they're excellent for airbrushing. They have a very large range, up to 215 colors, and they divide the range into what are called triads, or three specific paints, and each one comes with a dark, a medium, a medium, and a light, so it's very easy to match up these paints for highlights. And third, they have a really nice matte finish, which I like. Some not-so-amazing qualities of these paints include the value. Um, the cost is actually pretty high. It's not as bad as, as the Games Workshop ones, but it is a, a little bit costly for these paints. Second, um, in, especially where I live in Canada, they are not very common in stores. And third, uh, there have been several complaints by various amazing painters that the metallics tend to go on very, very thin and then produce not the best combinations. And as you can see by this example, they are very, very thin paints. Uh, here's just an example of Pale Green by Reaper. It goes on very thin. It almost looked watered down when you paint it on compared to the other two. And finally, I will be covering Vallejo model paints made by the Vallejo company. So Vallejo paints come in 17 milliliter or 60% of an ounce uh, eyedroppers. They typically sell for $3.50, which makes them the best bang for your buck out of the paints out there. They come in a gigantic range of 215 colors. These paints tend to be used in most of the tutorials by such awesome painters as Awesome Paint Job and Buy Painted. Such good qualities include, um, they give, as I said, an excellent value of paint, the consistency and coverage is awesome, and it has an excellent range of colors, which can be used for airbrushing or simply painting directly from the eyedropper. My only complaint about this range is that it's not very easy to find depending on where you live in the world. In certain parts, it's very much available, and in certain parts, like where I live, once again, it is very hard to find hobby shops which will actually hold Vallejo paints, despite how awesome they are. And therefore, you're forced to order from overseas, um, like Britain or the United States, and this tends to be a little bit of a hassle. So now, as you're very much full aware, hobby paints can be very expensive. For the cost of just about seven or eight Citadel paints, you could fill up the tank of a Ford Focus. So now, my next section will be dedicated to taking care of your paints so they last as long as possible and you get as much value as you can from each paint that you buy. First part is just simply cleaning up the paint pots or droppers. If you're using droppers, clean off the tip and I recommend just letting the paint settle a little bit in the dropper and then using an object such as a paper clip or a hobby pin just that's smaller than the diameter of the hole and just push down the paint so that you make sure that it, it has a very clear uh, nozzle before you put it away for storage. Also, make sure the lid is screwed on tightly. These simple steps, you'd be surprised on how long they can prolong your, your, the life of your paint. If you're using paint pots, you want the seal of your paint pot to be as tight as possible. Therefore, the worst thing that you can do is let paint get stuck in the lid or around the edge of your paint pot as you can see here. Therefore, after painting, I recommend taking a, once again, a paper clip and just removing all of the extra uh, paint from the paint pot and then using a rag to wipe off the edges. This will allow you to have a very tight seal on your paint pots, not letting any air in, and this will drastically prolong the life of your paint pot and it will not allow it to dry out anytime soon. Finally, store your paints on a, in an area such as a shelf in a room with a very constant temperature. Remember, they recommend that you store these things at room temperature, uh, specifically because if it's too hot, the paints will dehydrate and then you'll need to uh, add water or thinner or they'll be ruined. Or if you store in two cold areas, once again, they'll also be ruined. So store it in a room where 
like for example in a basement or in a closed room that you know will have a relatively constant temperature around room temperature. This will once again greatly enhance the life of your paints. Furthermore, I tend to store all my paints facing upwards, whether it be eyedroppers or pots. This just tends to uh, prevent them from rolling around or from the eyedroppers from potentially being clogged. So this concludes part two of my series um, of painting miniatures. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned a little bit about some of the major companies of paint, some of the types of paint, and some ways to prevent paints from going bad before uh, you need them. So thank you to all you awesome people once again for watching and subscribing to my videos. I really hope you enjoyed this video and I will hope to continue to make this series. Uh, to anybody who watched it, please leave a comment if you think I missed anything in the comment section below. Please like the video and subscribe to my channel if you already haven't done so. So thank you once again. Until next time, this is Jay saying, happy painting everyone.